where did you stop playing basketball? Uh, my after my junior season of uh, yeah, after my junior season, I decided to focus on training, getting bigger, and the recruiting process as a whole. So yeah. Can you go through the recruiting process? Did people ever say you're too tall to be tight? There were some of those people. Um, I didn't talk to those people. Uh, I stopped talking to them right then and there because, I mean, they, they were people who weren't going to believe in me. I wanted to go with someone who would believe in me. So um, there were some people who talked about offensive tackle, that kind of stuff. But I wanted to play tight end. So. No interest in playing. No. I wanted to play tight end. So. After a good day, what, what are you more proud of? When you guys run the ball for a lot of yards, or you throw the ball for a lot of yards? Uh, definitely after we run the ball for a lot of yards. Um, I think that's really when you wear a team down, you out physical and you just you run the ball for, you know, sometimes 200 plus yards feels just absolutely amazing, uh, let alone, you know, 400. So, yeah. Hey, are, you, are you 6'10 or are you taller than that? I'm 6'10, yeah. I believe uh, there's shoes off, I'm 6'9 and 3 quarters or maybe just above that, so. How did you choose your undergraduate major? Um, I, I had heard from a few different people, my academic advisor, that it was one of the better business degrees here. And it was very uh, econ, uh, economics focused, and uh, business management. So ag and food business management is like one of the, it's one of the better programs here at the U. And I just decided to go with it. And I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. You hope to go to work for a Minneapolis area company in that oh, field? Oh, man, there are so many opportunities around here. It's unbelievable. That, that definitely factored into my choice of major as well. Coach Fluck had a lot of praise for your game against Nebraska. Um, was it one of your best this year? Um, I don't know if it was one of my best. Hopefully my best is yet to come, but uh, it was definitely one of my better ones. I, I feel like we were able to control them up front. Um, you know, they, they did a good job. They didn't just lay down. Uh, surprisingly, I mean, we had 409 rushing yards. I think things were just clicking. Everything was just working. Sometimes you just have those days. Um, and that was definitely one of those days. But yeah, it was, it was a physical game. It was a fun game, and for sure. From the press box, Emory just looked different, like more in control, more confident. Could you see that on the field? Yeah, I think I could see that on the field a little bit. I, I noticed it in his demeanor a little bit. He, once he just started opening up, um, run lanes opened up. He just felt a lot more free and running around. I think he was feeling good. I definitely think he was a lot more confident after that, for sure. What kind of the dimension that give the offense when he's able to you know, pull that ball on the, on the three option plays. Oh man, it's an extra player that the defense has to account for. It's unbelievable. Um, sometimes they stuff the running back right in the middle, and then all of a sudden, oh, he's popping out. And uh, you never, it's, it's kind of funny because we never know when really that's going to happen. It's kind of a surprise to us sometimes, too. Um, so yeah, that was really fun. How many, how many family members did you have at Purdue, and how many do you expect to have on Saturday? Uh, at Purdue, I think I had upwards of 20 something, maybe 30 something there. Um, family and friends as well, it was, it was awesome. I had an awesome amount of support there and uh, Northwestern should be kind of similar as well. I'm, re I'm really excited. What do you see on that Northwestern run defense their second in the Big Ten? Oh yeah, they're, they're, their front four is really stout. Um, they're all big guys, uh, very physical. Um, they, they've been impressive throughout this year. They haven't given up a lot of the run, but um, we're, we're definitely not going to give up on trying to run the ball. We're going to run the ball against them, and I think we'll be successful as well. Hey, with the success that you've had with your run blocking ability this year, how do you maintain both like with your height getting to that low pad level and, and, or versus just like kind of raw strength? Right, yeah. I mean, I work on it every day, whether it's the weight room or on the field and drills. It's, it's something I have to work at constantly, and uh, it's it's – I mean, it's just as much as someone who's like 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, really, but you know, I just have to do a little extra work and a little extra mobility here and there. But yeah, it's a lot of work for sure. Did you ever go up against Steven Richardson? I, I don't think I have, surprisingly. He's, he's always on the inside, but uh, maybe when we were younger, but I don't think in the past couple of years I've had to go up against him. That would be a very interesting matchup. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, how have you um, looked at kind of the spirituality element of this culture. Where does that come in for you and, and kind of how do you feel like it's helped you this year? Yeah, I think, I think for me it's had to do with developing, uh, getting into my Bible and doing that kind of stuff on my own. 
Um, I've seen a lot of different guys get attached to different uh, di discipleship groups um, with different guys around here through Athletes in Action and that kind of thing. Um, I have done that in the past. This year, I've kind of focused on getting into it myself a little bit, getting into God's Word and just reading the Bible and kind of following some uh, devotionals and kind of doing my own thing there. And it's, it's, it's definitely been, I mean, we're plus three in everything we do, and I, I think it's something I've grown in as well, for sure. What's your plans for after this season? Uh, train, get picked up by a team. NFL, yeah. that's up here. NFL definitely. That's, yeah, that's absolutely my goal. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm not thinking about it as much right now. I definitely want to focus on what we got going right now, but yeah. Were there, some, were there some jokes about maybe some turf monsters for you earlier in the year after some big catches? <laughs> uh, I mean, every once in a while, yeah, but are you talking about like tripping up and yeah, oh yeah. Right at that four yard line somewhere around there, yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. I, you know what, I, I, I don't think uh, scoring is something that I really focus on, but I definitely, w once I get in there, it's going to be unbelievable. It's going to be awesome. Nate, hey, what's the story with the, uh, the corn over there? Oh, uh, that was for Nebraska, that was for last week. Uh, we all selected two different people. Uh, one outside of this room, outside of our team room, and then one inside this team room. Um, two people who we wanted to play for and show that we show on film that we were going to play hard for the person outside of this room and inside of this room. And I, I would I would say we accomplished that pretty well. I think we had a lot of guys playing really hard for each other. So, uh, mine was my parents and John Celestine. So, did did you tell everybody? I mean, did everybody see who? voted that they wanted to play hard for them or how did it work? Uh, we, we had people kind of talking about it in the team room a little bit, but uh, I don't. I think people kind of went over it and looked and just kind of looked around at different people's names. Um, it was more of an unspoken thing. Guys kind of went up to him, hey, you know, I wrote you down. and um, But some guys didn't really talk much about it and just wanted to keep it kind of under wraps and just wanted to play hard for someone, you know. Uh, fellow senior, uh, he's had, he's, I mean, his unbelievable story with his dad, that really, that really uh, struck with me and I just wanted to play hard for him. So. How has that kind of brought the team together, saying things like oh, that to each other? It, it's, I mean, there's, there's countless stories like that of people on our team. If you just went around the room and went to every guy, the amount of stories up there is just unreal. And if you really, if you really actually did go to every single guy, there'd be, 90 of those similar stories, and I think that that's why we all did that, and it was it was unbelievable. Yeah. Nate, what are, what are the things that have made really a dramatic difference in the in, in, in not the number of penalties this year but for you and, and, and for the for the offense? Talk a little bit about what are the things that have, have made that happen. Uh, well, first, I think it was coaching. Um, we focused really hard in the off season on no procedural penalties and no mental assignments. And I think we definitely, I mean, obviously that's something we've gotten a lot better at. And it's constantly something we work out, work on throughout the week. Um, it's, always, it's always just a part of discipline and being locked in. And that's something that I think our players as well have been able to take and coach guys, whether you're on the field, outside of the field, you're always focused on discipline. And it's something our leaders take a lot of pride in. Thank you guys very much.